All right, welcome to the podcast. Today we're doing an update interview for Azure. Ross is here. For people who don't know, give people a window and to remind them what your company does. So Azure Printed Homes, we 3D print modules in our factory. Yeah. It takes 24 hours to print each one, and then we complete all of the prefabrication in factory, so each one leaves ready to be plugged in and lived in straight away. And Ross is under strict NDA today, but a birdie told me they were on the shark tank, they went in the tank, it didn't air. It's unfortunate. Nothing happened, which is fine. But what a bummer that must be to go on a show and then nothing comes of it. All that work and energy. So sorry for your loss in dealing with that. That's not ideal. But uh, where's the company today? I don't, I so, don't know that little birdie. <laughs> <laughs> we have a little, a lot of birdies here in LA. But what? Where's the company now? What are you guys working on? We finished our raise actually last year, so we did a seed round that we closed just under five million, and uh, that allowed us to increase our capacity. So now we have three printers. We were just one printer in Culver City. We've moved down the road to Gardena. We have three printers running and we're growing again. We've got a deal with uh, the state of Colorado to open a second factory in uh, just outside of Denver beginning of next year. For people listening too, it's uh, pretty wild, the facility. I mean, it's like you say printer and when you go, right. it's quite literally quite amazing. I mean, it is a stunning piece of beautiful what looks like aeronautical technology it's an arm a big arm if people can imagine that for a second and then it's literally printing like some sort of composites coming out of it as it's making a home and exactly it's wild and, to see and people don't have to picture it. i mean we should have uh, well, we'll we, should have hosted, we should have hosted you uh at our place because yeah people are welcome to this is where nick cues the b-roll right cue the b-roll nick play it <laughs> but yeah people in the area outside of the area welcome to kind of reach out and set up a time to come and see the factory and the printing in action because uh, I understand like I've been in it for years so uh, I, I fully have my head around it but if I talk about printing a house to somebody then kind of you have to see it to fully appreciate what's the deal in Colorado and so what, what was Colorado tr the, as a state trying to solve that you happen to find a solution for yeah they have a, a housing uh, deficit and I guess with Colorado's climate they have kind of a very seasonal construction period as well so yeah. they were looking at something that was more factory based um, more reliable in terms of production and so that's the benefit for us is there's lots of 3d printing companies that exist that move their printers from site to site using uh, using a site-based printer um, but they're obviously governed by if it's too hot if it's too cold if it's too windy if it's too wet whereas being in a factory climate controlled we can print 24 7 yeah. 365 so and is there a number of units that you have to build under this no or? i mean the 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 incentive has come through the state um but we already have some great connections in in colorado just in the time that we've been working with the state we have a developer just outside of denver yeah. who he's, he's previously a rancher but he has three thousand lots that he wants to develop he's been to our factory in la super excited yeah. and uh and has actually um, signed a deal with us for us to develop the first hundred homes, but not only that, to actually custom build our factory on his land so that we can just feed directly into the development, which is kind of dream scenario for us and vision really, because like we wanted to be coming from a very sustainable approach to construction. We wanted to be in a situation where we can kind of feed in directly, not have like a, a macro factory in one spot in the States and ship all over the place. Um, so this is kind of like working really into what the initial vision was. That's amazing. And then how much, is, how much are the units now? And you have different versions. But yeah, yeah. We go all the way from like a hundred square foot studio that you can book in your backyard yeah. up to full size uh, single family home. So they're all modular. Still one story or can you, yeah. Single story, single yeah. Story, so okay. we're in the middle of our raise right now. So that's kind of what's changed with our strategy as well. So that seed round we um, completed last year was aimed at raising for not just growing our team and growing everything around the growth, but the equipment itself as well. So our strategy moving forward is to kind of repeat what we've set up with Colorado and have the locations that are in need incentivized with the kind of funding that we're looking at with Colorado. So our raise right now is to kind of continue our R&D, grow our team with this growth that we're going to be doing kind of geographically and long-term plan by end of 2026. Hopefully we're going to be looking at trying to have at least a factory in each time zone across the state so that we can be having a delivery radius that is, yeah, in keeping with our sustainable yeah. approach. Smart. 
So, so I'm a developer. And so the questions are always in my head, okay, you partner up with the state, interesting. What's the problem they're trying to solve is obviously use a housing deficit. I think that's happening in LA. And so we're familiar with that. But then the listener might think, is this homeless housing? Is it workforce housing? Who's paying for the housing? What's the housing for? That does the state own it? And then they just sell it. Do they rent it? What's the, what's that model? With the state, it's more just providing funding for us to be able to set up in that location. The actual contracts that come out of it aren't necessarily kind of related or or dependent on the on the funding. I mean, yeah. hopefully it comes with some Got it. Um, I see. government based so, contracts as well, but yeah. it's not it's not solely connected to that. But I mean, for us as a technology, like we see it more as a construction technology than necessarily a specific product. So like the fact that we can print a module in 24 hours suits any developer, any one at home, anyone that needs housing uh, or structures faster than the months that you normally would have to kind of wait to, to achieve the same level of progress. So we're able to print and produce for any number of markets. And what's the primary product like people are at least buying? Is it mostly like vacation rentals? Is it studios is it even or not even maybe a home just like a temporary office like what are you seeing when it comes to your product offering that's that sort of the hero product i guess yeah i mean it's kind of changing like our strategy has always been kind of a stepping stone of like we started with just the 100 to 120 square foot units that can go into the back of someone's yard be a Mm -hmm. studio be an office be a workout room then to adus where people are obviously using them as rentals and we also have in between that, we have a tiny home kind of version. So we sell units that are wheel-based. So for that, we have a lot of people across the country that are in the glamping industry or in the tiny home market. So that they, uh, we've got, we've got a lot of sales through that market as well. Where yeah, people are. We have one customer that has a glamping site in Arkansas, one in Utah, one in Montana, yeah. and he's ordered. 30 to kind of distribute across his different glamping uh, locations and then and then homes themselves so like that has been our kind of stepping stone to effectively cover everything from tiny studio to full single family size home and as you mentioned like our r&d is based on going vertical as well so that we can then move to multi-family mid-rise high-rise developments as well so that's kind of the the growth roadmap. The other parts of R&D are that we don't just want to be 3D printing the shell like we do right now. Like that's the most, hands down the most like innovative and efficient part of our entire process, but being able to 3D print other elements of the home and and bring them together in our assembly is what we see happening so that- Like what? what, what eventually, I mean, it could be cabinets, doors, sure. toilets, sinks, like the whole thing. Every, every component of a house could effectively start as our material that we're then printing into components feeding into the main assembly line wow. and creating these entirely printed homes so yeah so th- we're away, we're away away from that but i mean that's the that's the path that we're shooting for so the idea being basically you buy a home in a box and then you put that box on the land you need and then you just add the power the sewer line yeah uh, i mean that, the drain and that's f- it there's there's so many like i've been in construction all my life and i, I have like witnessed and f- felt firsthand like the frustrations involved in the whole process and like from finding labor to seeing material prices shoot through the roof to schedules and timelines going way beyond expectation like there's headaches all the way through and the fact of taking like a process such as home building away from the stress of a customer has been like and simplifying the whole thing like We've built up all of this construction engineering knowledge over centuries. It's not really changed like for the last century, but there's no reason why we can't take all of that learning and putting it into a single print rather than continuing to have lots of different trades, lots of different details overcomplicate and, and cause more headaches for everyone involved and most important of all the person receiving it at the end. So sure. And so what right now, if if like a developer buys it, do they take care of all the, sort of getting all the hookups before you guys bring it on site? We assist as well. I mean, uh, we kind of guide and handhold as much through the process as we can. As I say, we come from construction as well, so we can help set up um, utilities, foundation, entitlements, everything kind of that comes before us physically. And is the city ever like, what is this? What's going on? Or are they 
because it's kind of a phenomenon in some way where it hasn't really been seen. And so to a, a normal plan checker, they're like, this doesn't exist. Right, like it's right. Not, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the advantage of, of the fact that it's factory built is that we have a, a system that allows us to go through our, particularly in California, to go through our third party approval agencies. So yeah. they come to the factory, inspect it for quality and provide the stamp of insignia and provide the design approval. Yeah. So really it's kind of, yeah, taking the onus away from like, local but i mean generally anyone within a city that we've dealt with so far is kind of excited by yeah. the new approach and the fact that it's potentially making their lives easier and uh, and the whole process faster for everyone as yeah. well so what's the pipe dream and so when you think about this company in five years ten years and obviously let go of all reality in sense of like the technology today will change right things will change you guys will be in a different position what's the pipe dream for the business or for you personally, just as like a dreamer, like what would you love yeah. to see the, the, the printing, the whole thing do? I mean, I have one dream now and I'll have another one tomorrow. That's, and that's kind of the beauty of what we're doing. There's not like necessarily, even on, on like a week to week, month to month basis, there's never really a finish line of being like, we did it, we completed it. Yeah. Let's move on to something else. Is There's always something, like what we're doing right now is literally the tip of the iceberg of what mm -hmm. is possible with 3D printing and construction and everything else around it. So the options are, are kind of limitless. I touched on earlier on, like being able to print and have, say like that, the big printers that you've seen and that will print the actual shell itself will be the main assembly line. We then have sub printers that are printing the smaller components all feeding into that main assembly line. It's almost entirely automated, taking in and drawing on kind of what the automotive industry has done for manufacturing and yeah, making it even more efficient and whatnot. But in terms of the company growth, like I feel like our goal of, of getting to one in each time zone right now across the States will, one then, factory. will then hit, yeah, one yeah. factory across the state uh, in each time zone. But we'll hit then a probably a point where we'll be weighing up as to whether we move to more of a licensing or a franchising um, scenario where we're providing material, providing programming and designs and, and the equipment itself for licensees to take on. So I think, I mean, that, that four across the states will take us to, like each, each factory should do 20 to 30 million a year. So that will take us to around 100 revenue from those four. So... At that point, I feel like that will be our crossroads as to yeah whether we continue the same vein of growth or whether we move to more licensing franchising. That's a really interesting model. And so in that world, things get a little simpler. You license the you own the technology; it's patented. You license it out, and you can take it anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've already had lots of people across the world reach out. I mean, like anywhere where cost of construction is is crazy, where labor costs are through the roof, places like Australia, Japan parts of Europe, as soon as you have those sorts of economies, then it just comes in and completely blows the competition out because you're taking a lot of the, the labor cost away from what they would normally have to pay. So totally. it's, uh, what about like boats? Like, have you guys ever considered, I mean, I'm sure you can print anything, right? Right. Yeah. At, yeah. Some, at some point you, yeah, yeah, it's just an input. Yeah, exactly. People have printed 3d printed boats. We haven't printed one yet. And people have asked, like, can we put them out on the ocean, I was like, if you, des <laughs> if you design the flotation device, sure, you can yeah, put the yeah. you can put a unit on top. But yeah, we haven't dived into into boat printing yet. But. So you guys are staying focused, <laughs> right? What's the next round of funding? What you guys are raising capital now? We're raising or? capital now, um, five series million. A? Yeah, Series okay. A of of, uh, of five million. And as I said, like we now with this model is we have equipment financing taken care of with that strategy so the raises are more about kind of growing everything else around it our marketing our sales our team yeah. allowing us to focus on that r d to take us to the next levels moving forward and just continue to make not just the printing process but everything around it as efficient as we can make it we, right now we have a configurator on site on our website that allows customers to design their own unit pick their interior exterior finishes we've already got kind of parametric ideas of being able to allow much more customization people being able to take a picture upload it and we can put that into the side of your 3d printed house like mm -hmm. there's there's so much that we can do on the design side that is going to change things as well so so the vision is like lots of bubbles <laughs> yeah yeah that's got to be tough too just to contain it because there's so many things you could do it's, but it's it great from time. a creative perspective but yeah it's tough from like 
selecting kind of which ones to focus on and which ones to be like, all right, that's more of a 2025 sure. thing that we'll pick up and, and see. But yeah, it's part of the part of the challenge, but also part of the nice thing to have. Yeah. What else should people know about the business? Where to even buy one? Where to order one? Head to azureprintedhomes.com and uh, you can see all of our socials on there. We're, we're getting better at sharing, <laughs> but we've got some content on there showing printing process, some of our installed units. There's a beautiful one that we, uh, we dropped into uh, Big Sur, which is uh, on our Instagram overlooking the ocean. That guy, he rents his unit out for like 750 a night. So he, he got return on investment and paid for it within uh, a few months. So purchasing is, we've tried to make it as easy as possible. So head to the website, you can see the different models, click the configurator, complete our form, and you'll be going into our, uh, into our funnel. So yeah, that's the easiest way. And if you're interested in investing, we also, as part of our growth that we've done is we've, we've raised money through crowdfunding from the very beginning. I mean, uh, our first round, we, we did crowdfunding campaign i think it was just over two years ago what platform did you do it on uh the first one we did was uh we've we've been jumping between republic and wefunder so we did okay. one on republic one on wefunder back to republic and right now we're on wefunder okay. um so if anyone wants to invest they can get that link from our website as well there's a little banner running across the top to with a link to to our, our wefunder campaign page but it's great because like it helps to build not just capital but the community of people that are interested and people that are passionate about what we're doing as well so it kind of is something that i think we'll continue to do through the rounds like this is the first we started our series a like in march and straight away did a crowdfunding campaign so that all the people that have been interested previously have kind of first first dibs yeah that's really smart well ross we didn't violate any ndas today Thank you for your Depends time. on your editing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the episode no one will ever know. Exactly, yeah. Aired or didn't air the, uh, on the show. The uncut on ABCs. version. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for coming on. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.